ba ba bam Hey, everybody. Last Outrider here with a special Sisters of Battle Army Building video for you. A lot of people out there interested in Sisters of Battle. They don't know how to start. They have a lot of biased reporting from Space Marine and Chaos players who give them crap advice and even worse bat reps. Let me tell you how I started my Sisters of Battle Army. I started with Battle Sisters, literally. Uh, I go, as the core of my army, three full squads of Battle Sisters and a fortification. Then you add the HQ of your choice. Normally I do the Conclave and I add in Death Cult Assassins and fun stuff like the Anarcho-Flagellates to take care of the hand-to-hand -hand stuff. Um, I always add in a fortification. I don't care if it's an Aegis line or a defense wall, something you can create yourself. Always put in a fortification. But an Aegis, you just put up the fence line uh, with the Icarus cannon, take care of flyers, and set. You can imagine, even with just one squad, that's 20 sisters behind it getting their involved saves right now. Everybody has to come up to it. With the line, be, you want to make it as long as possible in your zone, and here's why. Because if you're uh, most games, you'll be able to cover two table corners if you're playing that, or if you're going objectives, you'll probably be able to cover two, probably three objectives, or put them close by, even with just an Aegis defense line. Now, as for your fortifications, you have to look at your upgrades very carefully. Now, I use the Fortress of Redemption as the mainstay of my army. So you can imagine now that just starting, even in a thousand point game, thousand point game, I'm able to take at least two full battle squads. Uh, uh, that's 40 models with a preacher in each one, that's 42 models and a veteran sister upgrade. You're talking, yeah, you're talking that, 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 that that's that, that's around 600 points. Okay, uh, the the Fortress of Redemption, that's another 220 points. You're talking, you're talking about 800 points, 800 points, right there. All right. Your HQ can be whatever you want. I use the the Ecclesiarchal Enclave. For it to get death cult assassins and arco flagellants, <clears throat> and I put them behind it. Oh, that also takes care of redemptia. For people who are wondering about redemptia, when you have a fortification, you will basically force people to come to you, especially when you're covering two table corners or multiple objectives. They will have to come to you. Normally, my repentia are sitting in the main tower waiting for somebody to come close, and a penitent engine sitting right behind it. Somebody's going to come there. Otherwise, they don't come out. Also, look at your upgrades. I almost always take escape hatch. What's escape hatch? Escape hatch allows me to place a, a point anywhere within 12 inches of my fortification, the redemption fortress, uh, secret from the other player, which becomes and embarkation and debarkation point for the fortress. It's insane, yeah, but it's true. And it's hidden. Now, how do you usually do this? In one-on-one -on -one battles, it, well, if you're in a tournament or a type of, uh, of organized play, <coughs> you call over the organizer, put a die on the table and say, uh, this is where it is, and then they go away. Now, if you're just two people, do you have a cell phone? If you do, Tell them to go out of the room, put the die on the table or some other thing that you're going to use to mark where your escape hatch is, take a picture of it, bam, take away the dice, tell them to come back in the room. Guess what? Whenever you want to use it from that point on, if they want to question it, here's the picture, here's the picture. I took a picture on my phone. This is where the escape hatch is. Now you know I'm not just making it up. That's how I do it. Use it. It's insane, especially for Repentia, man. <laughs> now, normally the place, place that I put it is I use it as an offense, not as a defense. So I may put it, here's my fortress, you know, sitting right here. I put it 12 inches out, somewhere right in the front. Yes! 
Somebody comes within spitting range of me, but damn! Suddenly, a whole bunch of arcoflagellants and death cult assassins and Repentia come flying out of that thing in the middle of the field. What the fuck is usually the response that I get as I kill them. Use it. Other good upgrades. Um, oh, Void Shield. A Void Shield basically gives my entire fortress <laughs> a uh, armor value 12 shield. Regenerating shield. You have to, I think you have to penetrate it. I don't know if it goes down on glances. People can look it up. Uh, if it does, either way, every other turn on a 5 plus, it comes back up. Okay? Which is awesome. I also use searchlights. Obviously, that takes care of any night fire. And, um,. Repel the enemy. Yes, don't forget there's a lot of conflict about repel the enemy because it says repel the enemy basically allows you on any building to come out of an access way and assault the same turn. Important note, the escape hatch does not get this. So, many people will point out that there's only one access point on the, on the Fortress of Redemption. And it's the door in the back of the main tower. That's true. And then you have to point out to them the rules about battlements. Battlements count as an access point, but a one-way access point. In other words, people that are down in the annex or down in the walkway can come up onto the battlements. And then the battlement counts as an access point so they can jump down from that and go on their way and assault in that same turn. Now, I'm not saying they do that all in the same turn. I'm saying battlements count as an access point for the repel the enemy rule. This is great if you're taking Celestine squad. Um, also good for Seraphim because they can also jump down as well. But the, really, they're not that high, especially from the walkway. <clears throat> what else? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, I forgot. The one I always take. Remote fire. Very important. Remote fire is basically a 25-point upgrade, and it allows you, a unit inside the Fortress of Redemption or any building, to fire the remote weapons, which would be the twin-linked Icarus cannon, and uh, the crack storm and frag storm missile launchers can be fired from the main building with, with, without having to be in those annexes. <laughs> Very important. This is finally gives the main building of the fortress a purpose. Okay, so you take your cannonist or your HQ or somebody with a really nice ballistic skill, say your Seraphim squad, and you put it in there it can now fire all of your remote weapons. It's very nice. Um, what else do I use? I'm just thinking offhand. That, that pretty much covers all of it. Uh, uh, oh, I also use the four, the four heavy bolters. Here's the thing about the heavy bolters. They can be placed anywhere on the fortress. And they can change every game. They're 10 points each. They replace the weapon of one of your squad members, which as I said, I take two to three full squads of Battle Sisters. So that's 40 to 60 Battle Sisters lining my fortress. For 10 points each, they all now get one, one heavy bolters. Put them anywhere you want. It depends upon your terrain and your game that you're playing, whatever you want to do. You want to put them all up on top on the main building? No problem. You want to line the battlement in the front with it? No problem. I usually place them somewhere where they're covering my escape hatch, okay? Because I use them to clear the way if, if the 60 or 120 other shots don't clear the way. They definitely add to it. And don't forget uh, Wall of Death comes out of out of shooting points too. 
That's why you always have the Holy Trinity of Melter, Flamer, Bolter. Somebody assaults your wall, they should be getting flamed. It, it, wow. It's, I rarely use lose any thousand point game uh, with this setup. It's very difficult for anybody to field something that can really take it. Even in these knight armies, and occasionally you find somebody who has a knight army. I'm I'm really not that bothered by it. Uh, the crack storm, the Icarus cannons. Oh, also the flying circuses. Somebody comes in with a lot of flyers. You have to remember when you have those bolters and a preacher in every squad. You're going to be re-rolling your hits or re-rolling your wounds every every phase. Uh, if they're within twelve, you're going to rapid fire. So you're getting you're, you're getting somewhere around a hundred a hundred shots, a hundred and twenty shots. If you've got three full full units. If you've got two, you're still talking 40, 40 to 80 shots um, on on massive armies, even against Tyranids. If you're if you're talking about Meltas and they're coming close enough for that. Oh, the melt of bombs. Uh, you I always always carry a full squad of of uh, seraphim typically in the larger games, and that's typically where you're going to be fighting these Imperial Knight lists you know with five imperial knights five imperial i've had my seraphim squads easily easily pop out of an escape hatch and end up placing 10 melt bombs on a knight you know and that's not counting their own melt weapons shooting at it it's taking out at least one knight fairly easily and they don't even know where it is especially if they're coming in from the front just don't get discouraged is what I'm saying. Think about it. Use these in combinations. Use your brain. It's going to come down to tactics. Nothing is going to be an automatic win. But I'm telling you, nothing is hopeless either. So, to recap, if you're starting a sister's army, start with battle sisters. You can almost always find lots of them. Uh, lots, meaning, you know, random amounts of numbers being sold on eBay or someplace like that. Just pick them up in groups of three or five or ten at a time. Just build it up for that. Sixty of them is where I started. That's what I did. Just really a canonist and sixty battle sisters is an insane amount of, of firepower for only around 800 points. And then I threw in uh, the fortress for another 220, and then I started upgrading that. And you're talking about a thousand point game right there, and it's really not that expensive. The expensive armies for sisters is when they start going for repressor tanks or exorcists or this or that or the other. Those are the, uh, and do conversions, okay? Let me tell you, a Celestine squad mounted in a Rhino is a great upgrade once you start getting past a thousand points. This is my strike force, which I start using to, to go out and claim other parts of the table afterwards. That was the first upgrade of 10 Celestines with a Preacher and, every, and, and things like that, which look amazingly the same as Battle Sisters, so you're not even having to do any really special wep uh, special sisters that you need to buy and it's in a rhino really it's not that expensive try it you'll like it let me know how it works for you and until next time bye